the, the, the way to deal with power is so much different if you look at the network than you look at hierarchical, hierarchical things. And I don't, what we really will have to do is we have to change the, the cultural way to deal with power. We have to redefine what power is all about. If you look at the political systems, I think they feel now a bit threatened what is happening there. Because this power shift is um, clear to experience at the moment. And therefore, on the other hand, the people feel challenged. How do you think it, how do you think this will emerge in the political realm? Yeah, if, if you look at what is happening, I think we have two levels where it's already uh, very strong. This is on the level on the global level of agenda setting. If you have this upspeeding effect, you can have even 20 million people engaging for a topic. And this puts pressure on the political system. So it's on the global scale. It's just because you can create mass movements by grassroots campaigning in a very short period of time. And this is already impressing the political area. And the other part is more locally. The people use the net to synchronize their activities and they start to be active on this local level and to be part uh, in a participatory way in the, uh, the political activities on the local level. Where I don't think it's strong enough in the moment is in between. So we are very strong on the agenda setting level and quite strong on more local activities. And this is for the people, I think, a real threat. You can even see it when, when you go in the local political things. You can have um, many people engaging there, even giving you your vote when you are creating something like a, a new party. I've just done this in my own uh, political area and we were able to, to get into the political power just in a very short period of time. Because on the local level, the people use it, they like it, and they step in, they try to participate. And things like uh, avats.org really work on the agenda setting level. So there's a threat for the political power for the parties and for the established forms. Yeah, I, I think it's less in the in the U.S. because there is no possibility of, of creating new parties, or there's no practical possibility. We've had two parties hmm. for well over 100 years, and that's uh, on, the, on the national on the national level. level. Yeah, on the national but level even even on the local be, level, yeah. it's not generally. Not totally. It's mm -hmm. yeah. Um, if an, if an, end, mm -hmm. an insurgent wants to run in a local mm -hmm. election, um, generally uh, he or she is a member of one of parties or is not, but there's not new parties being formed locally. It's not, not a mm -hmm. party-based system mm -hmm. in that regard. Um, I, I, there are other signs of, um, it, it does seem to me that the internet, mm. first of all, enables, it, it, as you know in the U.S. we have a crazed political system for fi how we finance political campaigns. Mm. It's completely corrupt and okay. corrupting. It has to be, the way it's set up, it basically has to be corrupt. So you have to do something via the internet. Um, well, <laughs> you should. Lawrence Lessig, who mm -hmm. is an um, early internet activist mm -hmm. on the Creative Commons, mm -hmm. and um, it was his creation to a large degree, um, he has pretty much stopped mm -hmm. uh, working on the issue of copyright and um, associated issues mm -hmm. in order to focus on reforming the political system mm -hmm. okay. um, and campaign finance mm -hmm. in particular, because mm -hmm. it, the lesson that I'll, I'll speak for him and not very well, mm -hmm. unfortunately. Mm -hmm. Probably get it wrong, but one of the lessons he learned from the copyright, the failure to to uh, get reform at the legislative level um, on copyright in the United States was that the system, first you have to reform Congress, first you have to reform the way that we elect. Very big because, deal. yeah, mm -hmm. so that's what he's been, mm -hmm. um, he's been working on. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I think we do see some effect um, on the sense of participation that people have, mm -hmm. even at the national level. Mm -hmm. Um, we see it at the way that news is contextualized now. Mm -hmm. So when the, the news media or, let's say, uh, announce something, have their story, that story mm -hmm. will sweep through both sides or all sides mm -hmm. and get recontextualized. Mm -hmm. And that's a very powerful thing. That is mm -hmm. a very powerful thing. It takes much of the power away from it. Um, and even uh, the most ordinary thing, which mm -hmm. is the ability to get information. When I was a lad, mm -hmm. You wanted to get a candidate's position on an issue mm -hmm. in the you know, 60s, 1960s, or 70s, or 80s. You mm -hmm. had to 
go down to the local office or right away and, mm -hmm. and you would yeah. write to them and you'd get a couple of sheets of paper. Yeah. Here all I have a position paper on whatever mm -hmm. and yeah. <laughs> there'd be five or six of them. Mm -hmm. And now that having so that much easy. oh mm -hmm. there's so much information yeah. about everything. Sure. And that actually does make a difference too. Mm -hmm. Reforming the basic power hierarchical mm -hmm. power structure of government I think is very far away. <laughs> you know in Germany we have already up to fifty percent of the local authorities no longer organized by a party. So this is really a movement which is all over the country. Hmm. The people start to try to participate, they activate themselves, and they just use um, internet things to, to make this quicker. So can we tell if that's a coincidence or an actual, uh, just a... Um... <laughs> mm -hmm, yeah, this is every time yeah. difficult uh, to, to find a causal relationship, but it's absolutely interesting to see it. And uh, I just, you know, I'm an experimental psychologist, therefore I love to do experiments. And then I said, hey, let's try to figure out what is the problem here in our area and let's try to activate the people. And we did it and we were over the 5% threshold in one election. Uh, and we had now the situation with the Piratenpartei in Germany. And they did it in, in Berlin. So I'm not sure whether it already 9%. works. 9%. 9%. <laughs> yeah, even double. So it, I'm not sure whether it, it works on the national level, whether this is already the case, but on the local level it works. So what I'm realizing is that the agenda setting on the national level is deeply um, changed by this internet activity. Right. So the agenda on the local level. The agenda setting at the national level in the United States is dominated by President Obama's birth certificate. <laughs> Basically, but not anymore. Okay. That, but it was for. <laughs> A yeah. year, a year and a half, two years. That was mm -hmm. dominated is too strong. But it was the agendas that get set often are entirely mm -hmm. corrupt, trivial, and and carefully planned by somebody. Right? Uh, um, mm -hmm. So that makes me a little less optimistic. The mm -hmm. um, fact that people will, will react strongly to mm -hmm. a idea that they would like to believe for whatever reason, mm -hmm. um, and the barriers to mm -hmm. Or, or down. I think it's, it's a real danger and somewhat, and I'd say somewhat discouraging. As is the polarization in the United States. The polarization between Republicans and Democrats, mm. and I have my own hypothesis about this, it's the Republicans' fault, but that's, yeah. you know, I'll leave that aside. That polarization, it may be, we don't know, it may be, in fact, a result of echo chambers on the internet. It may be other things, but it's yeah. very, very difficult. But, but you know, I'm, I'm always a little bit puzzled that the people are looking to North Africa, saying, hey, there's something revolutionary there, and the internet plays a role. But where's the difference between what you are telling of from the Democratic part, where you say, hey, we need to change, we have the opportunity to change, we have the possibility to network. How big has the frustration to be to open the system up again? Um, how big is there? That's how big it is. We can't tell, I can't tell, I don't think anybody can tell whether uh, one could hypothesize that mm. based upon the evidence that mm. uh, the internet in non-democratic regimes increases democracy and the internet in democratic mm. regimes uh, decreases, uh, lets mm. the worst of... Negative. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, I would hate to think that. I remain an optimist. Yeah, but, you know, it's, it's a not what I can see. <laughs> because in Germany it's really different. I think uh, they use it and they use it in a proper way. It's just a question whether the representative democracy is still the best way, and they are searching for new forms of direct participation. And this really grows with the Internet, and you can feel this. It is not, not produced by the Internet. This would be too much. But the people know that it's there, and they challenge the, uh, the leaders, and they challenge the powerful people to say, hey, you can talk with me. It's possible now. And in the moment, the politicians use the internet more or less more for self-enhancement, for their political campaigning, and the people don't like this. So they are looking at the way the politicians are using the internet, saying no, and this is one of the reasons why a party like the Piratenpartei has a chance in Germany, because they try to use yeah. it in a better way. And I think this will be the big learning of the representative democracy here, to, to find out what the new way of involving the network in democratic procedures can be. It's a learning process. It's yeah, not ready now. It's an invention process too. It's an invention so, process, more or less. Yeah. One of the um, 
one of the more promising ways of, of um, enabling a, a leader mm. uh, who has many followers, and so there can't be a direct conversation, mm -hmm. um, enabling a leader to communicate well with uh, a large set of followers, I, mm. I still think was actually um, exhibited in, in the Howard Dean campaign in the U.S. in 2004, mm -hmm. uh, in which the candidate, Howard Dean, first of all, couldn't um, uh, engage. He's too busy. I mean, campaigns are incredibly mm -hmm. busy, uh, so he just didn't have yeah, time to blog awesome. every day. And he's a terrible, yeah, the one time he tried it, he's a terrible, yeah. terrible blogger. I mean, you should not be mm -hmm. doing it. <laughs> Not everybody's a good blogger, you know. I would have been happy to have voted for yeah. him, but he was a mm -hmm. terrible blogger. Mm -hmm. um, but there were a set of people in the campaign mm -hmm. staff mm -hmm. who wrote the blog, and they signed mm -hmm. it. Nobody thought it was Howard Dean. You know, it was mm -hmm. clearly okay. it was, uh, it was it was Zephyr, and it was Matt. Mm -hmm. and it was completely transparent. Mm -hmm. um, and they wrote as absolute mm -hmm. partisans. They're working for the campaign. Mm -hmm. you, they're not going to give you the, you know, they are mm -hmm. partisans, but they're really smart. They're really funny, and they knew mm -hmm. how to write really well. And so mm -hmm. they became a proxy mm -hmm. for the candidate. Okay. They were able to talk in a voice that mm -hmm. the candidate could not. They mm -hmm. could say things mm -hmm. the candidate could not. Well, they didn't mm -hmm. say much that mm -hmm. he couldn't, but mm -hmm. they sometimes did. And they were able to engage with a wider set of, of mm -hmm. uh, participants. Mm -hmm. And having that um, ordinary person, and they were exceptional people, but ordinary people, mm -hmm. um, being our representative to the mm -hmm. candidate mm -hmm. is actually sort of, a, first mm -hmm. of all, a founding dream of, mm -hmm. of the American democracy, mm -hmm. citizen representatives. Yeah. And that's what these people, they were unelected, but that's yeah. what they were. Mm -hmm. um, and is a, it seemed to me to be a really good way of making the campaign more human and accessible mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. to encourage participation, mm -hmm. all the sorts of things that, that we want. Mm -hmm. I haven't seen that particularly repeated or done very well, especially mm -hmm. not for elected officials, mm -hmm. for governing. Mm -hmm. uh, I'd like to see that. And what's, what's about the local level? You're talking about the national level, and yeah. there it's difficult for the people because it's also big. But on the local level, plays the internet uh, on the local level already a role in politically? Yes, yeah, very yeah. much so. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, and and along the lines that, yeah. that you've said, mm. I mean, the, okay. the ability to participate and have an effect goes up as the domain gets smaller. Mm. So um, at the state and at the local level, communication is almost all done over, well, mm. the TV ads still count. Mm. But, uh, Mm -hmm. um, serious communication that actually has something to say is general and organizing. Mm -hmm. All is done through the internet, um, and I, I agree with you. I think it does have the sorts of effects that you, you've wanted to. Mm -hmm.